guys, welcome to Winter Bass Tactics. Catching bass in cold waters is not the easiest thing. And I know I've got some messages from you guys saying, hey, can you show us how to catch cold water bass? And it's not easy, and I have to agree with you, it's not easy at all. I went out for about five days and wound up with about five bass. Um, the bite was really tough, about 40 degree to 50 degree uh, waters. Um, I was throwing the, a spinner bait, a crankbait, and a shaky head, and you know, these are my main lures, but you can also use, uh, you use weightless plastics, pretty much uh, anything you can work nice and slow. The bass around this time of year want a really slow presentation. They want an easy meal, and they don't want to waste a lot of energy. So here are my winter bass tactics. I hope they'll help. Now, the first thing I do is look for small ponds. You can go out there to big lakes and catch winter bass, but I think it's a lot easier at these smaller ponds. You can cover ground a lot easier, there's not a lot of room for them to hide, and they warm up just a little bit faster, of course, because they're smaller. Um, another thing I like about going to small ponds first is that you can follow the activity up to the bigger lakes. Say you start with a small lake, um, pre-spawn kicks in, you know, the water hits around 55 to 60, and you know, the bite's gonna be pretty damn good. And uh, what you can do is uh, after that week or so, if it warms up too much and they start, they do start spawning and the, maybe the bite slows down a little bit, you can go to the next biggest lake and you'll probably hit that same activity that you had at the other lake because that bigger lake is probably just hitting that temperature that the other lake was at as long as you have uh, consistent weather. Now if you're more of a spawn or post-spawn fisherman, you can follow that activity too. Another thing to remember is that a warm rain will heat up a lake faster than a warm day. We had ice on our lakes for about maybe a week of 50 to 60 and one day of 70 degree weather. And you know, it did a little bit of damage to the ice, but it didn't do much. We got one rain in the high 40s and the high 50s, took care of most of the ice. A couple days later, we got another warm rain, mid 50s, took care of every single bit of ice. So keep that in mind that a warm rain is gonna heat up these lakes a lot faster. So if you get a warm rain, get out there because a lot of times that'll even trigger you know the bass to be a little bit more active that tiny bit of a temperature change another thing you want to pay attention to is the bait fish in the lake now if you see bait fish start coming up on shore the bass are soon to follow and whatever you see bait fish holding up you know are also places that you might want to start I like to start with channels move up uh, if I'm not catching anything there move up a little bit more shallow look for bait fish Look for any structure you can, whether it's rocks, uh, trees, and wood. Throughout this whole week, my, uh, my pattern was just fishing around any submerged trees and, or any wood. That's where I got all every single one of my fish. Now, when I'm working these submerged trees, I like to use uh, either a spinnerbait or I was using the uh, new KVD 1.5 square bill crankbait. If you have any uh, crankbaits that are good for bouncing off wood and stuff, these are really, really good baits to use. You want to just go real slow, and I can't stress this enough, just slow, 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 and just bump everything you can. Bump every little branch you can. You start feeling the thump, 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 thump. That's a good thing. You know, if you're not getting anything on it, throw another bait. Make sure you work that piece really good before you leave it. If you find a submerged tree, make sure that you feel like you've done everything you can if there's a bass there to catch it, throw a spinnerbait through there. You're not catching anything, throw a crankbait through there. If you're not catching anything with that, take a shaky head, take a, you know, a weightless plastic or anything else that you think is gonna work that can give a slow presentation and just work it real thoroughly, real slow. And most likely, if there's a bass in there, you're gonna get it. Another lure you might wanna use along with the shaky head is just a plain old jig, maybe throw a trailer on it and flip it and pitch that around wood too. That's also a really, really uh, proven technique in cold weather. You might even want to throw a you know, pig and jig is really, really good option. Um, a swim jig you can even do. And what you want to do is just come real close to that wood. You know, If you see any tree standing up, just pitch it in there, let it sit, work it a little bit, reel it up. You can pitch it again. if. You know, if you think that's a really good spot, try and try the other side of it. If you're not getting anything, just move on to the next one. That's a quick way of covering water in cold weather. Another bait you might want to use is a suspended jerk bait. Um, now I, I'm going to work 
like around these, uh, I want to work around brush, submerged trees, because not only do the bass like the hold there, the bait fish like the hold there too. And the bass are going to be sitting there, you know, with an easy ambush point to get an easy meal when these uh, bait fish or sunfish are coming over top. Uh, I like to try to match the color sometimes. You know, sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. A lot of bait fish die off this time of year, so what you want to do is, you know, throw that jerk bait out there, pop it a little bit to make it look like an injured or dying fish, and you can just let it sit there. And the bass love it when it just sits there. Now, I fished it a little bit. I didn't have any success, but I know this is a proven bait in winter. I've had success on it before, and I know plenty of people who are having success with it right now in cold weather. Now, winter bass fishing really scares a lot of people really turns a lot of people away. A lot of people will come out, they'll fish, freeze to death, not catch anything. It'll turn them off for the rest of the season and they'll just wait for it to get warm. They'll just sit inside. And that's a bad thing. You should come out here, if you can, and fish cold water because you can catch some pretty big bass. And you know, catching any fish this time of year is a good feeling. The important thing is not to give up. There's gonna be days when you go out, you're not gonna have one bite. You're gonna go out there and get one fish. You know, there's going to be a couple days maybe in a row that you're not going to get one single bite. And the important thing is not to give up. Because if you do give up, then you're definitely not going to catch anything. But I guarantee you, if you keep at it, you follow some of these techniques, some of these ideas, you're going to catch a bass eventually. All right, so let me walk you through um, my couple days of fishing with these tactics. The first day I went out, I was throwing this uh, Mega Strike Mega Bug on a... 1 8 ounce uh, Pro Series Shaky Head. I'm going with the 1 8 ounce because it gives it a nice uh, slow drop, but it still holds this bait up. When this, when this bait hits the ground, it's gonna stand straight up just like that. You can wiggle it around and really entice bass around structure, um, wood, rocks, like I said before. The first day, I lost a monster on this thing. I'm just working the bottom real, real slow on a drop off, and I feel, feel this bass bite, and. I've caught a pickerel, that was my first fish this year, and it didn't fight at all, and it was a pretty decent size. And this fish was fighting hard, so I knew whatever it was, it was really big and it felt heavy. So I set the hook and I'm reeling it in, and boom, within two seconds I lost it. So I was pretty disappointed, pretty upset about that, but I kept fishing, wind up not getting one bite for the rest of the day. So I went out the next day, came back to the same pond, uh, didn't catch anything, didn't get one bite, Ran over to another pond, nothing. So it's not looking good. I lost the big one. I'm not catching anything. And you know, it's a pretty disappointing uh, start to 2011 because I could have bring it in with a big fish, but I choked. The next day, go back to the same pond. I find some submerged trees. I've been working the bottom and I didn't really feel any structure the first couple of days. Now I found something I could really play with. I worked it really, really thoroughly with the shaky head first. Didn't get anything. And I could feel which way it was laying down from the cast I was making. It was laying down uh, parallel to the shoreline. So instead of taking my spinner bait, casting, you know, just getting hit, hitting a couple branches, I went, walked down a little bit, and I tried to cast right over top of the tree. And I followed the bulk of it right down with the spinnerbait real slow bumping into every branch I could and wound up getting my first bass of the year. But yeah this first bass 2011 right here it's a small one I lost a big one like I said uh, two days ago on the Mega Strikes Mega Bug on their uh, on their Pro Series Shaky Head but caught it on this color spinnerbait got a uh, Got a brush pile, a couple of trees falling down in the water and just bumping into everything. You know, just running across the bottom, bumping into every branch I can and this is the result. I'm gonna try to catch some more. Slow rolling this crane for, for the brush up. Oh, here we go. Oh, get a fish on. It's a nice one. Barely fighting at all. On the new KVD 1.5 chartreuse. 
And once you get that first bass, it's a lot of pressure off, off of you. It's a lot of weight off your back. It's a good feeling and you can relax a little bit more. I, I fished the rest of the day trying to find some of the same structure. I really couldn't find uh, much structure like that in the lake. A lot of that structure that I did find that was similar was really shallow and I wound up not catching anything. I decided to head to another pond. I picked up my girlfriend, Crystal. We ran to a small pond, maybe about 20 miles away. Um, about the same size, about the same water clarity. It was a little, uh, not muddy, but definitely murky. Um, definitely stained. I started off with the KVD 1.5 crankbait. Uh, there was a lot, a lot of wood, and a lot of trees falling into the water here, so I figured this was gonna be a good spot. And I wound up catching a small one. He was right, right up close to shore, right where the drop off was and right where the, the tree was laying down. And I was bumping all the branches, wasn't getting anything. And as soon as I got it up there, he took it. So I was working, working the deep parts, working the shallow parts, trying to find more structure with this crankbait. And I wasn't getting any luck. So I decided to switch over to, back over to the shaky head, the mega bug on it. And I went back to the same spot where I eventually, I eventually got back to the same spot where I caught the first bass. And lifting it up nice and slow, you know, it's working the bottom real, real thoroughly. And I get it to about the same spot where the other bass hit. And a nice two and a half, three pounder comes out, boom, hits it. I set the hook. I'm calling for the camera to come run over and, you know, not paying attention to the bass. Gave him a little slack and he was gone. So a little bit disappointed about that. Catching small bass. I lost two decent ones, but it's okay. I'm gonna work this a lot more. I've, I feel pretty confident in this now. So I fish, you know, I fish the rest of the, uh, fish a lot of laydowns, fish a lot of submerged trees, you know, with no avail, not getting one hit at all. Uh, go and work, go and walk over to a beaver dam that's a little bit in the water and start working that, not getting anything. Crystal's throwing uh, white and chartreuse strike back spinner bait and gets one, uh, you know, just off the beaver dam. Again, more wood structure. Uh, we fish a little bit, it was getting cold. We decided to pack it in. Uh, the next day, we got a little intel about a new pond I never fished before. Uh, heard it was supposed to be pretty, pretty good. So me and my girlfriend ran over to this pond and when I drive up, I was looking at the satellite images before I got there and I seen a lot of fallen trees, but then when we drive up, I seen a ton, ton of wood, a ton of trees at this one section of the pond. So that's where I go to first. Start working the KVD 1.5 crankbait and chartreuse and, you know, bumping into a lot, a lot of structure, but uh, structure did battle on my, on my crankbait. Wound up breaking the bill on it. So I was kind of mad about that, but went and tied on a spinnerbait. It's a little more snag proof, a little more weedless. <laughs> I was doing battle, getting it stuck, getting it stuck a lot, but getting it out. I finally got it snagged on a pretty big log and wind up losing, uh, losing my spinnerbait. So I'm sitting here and just broke that, just lost a spinnerbait. And I'm kind of glad I did because then I decided to switch back over to the shaky head and the mega bug and I worked it nice and slow just popping it through the branches getting it stuck a little bit not hooked but you know stuck where the weight is and just popping it up and bass actually really like that it makes a lot of commotion just working it nice and slow uh, switching up the retrieve a lot I'll give it one pop I'll give it two three and switch those all up and then I'll also lift it up drop it back down real slow and got a nice surprise. I wound up catching a really big white crab.